How are you going? Um, I'm a, another blow-in from another part of Ireland. I'm from Tipperary, which means that I have to... I am contractually obliged for the next week and a half to congratulate Galway on their recent win. <laughs> and then I can go back to resenting you for it. But what I'm here to talk to you tonight about is uh, what I do, really. And what I do is a type of science called bioinformatics. Now, I know you're probably thinking, that word is made up. And you're not entirely wrong because it's a relatively new discipline as these things are judged. But what bioinformatics actually is, is just, it's doing biological research using a computer and math. Which is fairly straightforward to explain, but it gets some dodgy looks from other biologists. Because <laughs> other biologists have the idea that, uh, see there's one of them. Um, they have the idea that if you're doing science and math, you should be a physicist. Chemistry is for people who are a little bit too into fire and drugs. And uh, they're very proud of having redefined both multiplication and division to mean sex. <laughs> but there's a, a bit of an issue coming along where over the last couple of decades we've made a, a lot of tremendous advances technologically in what we're able to do and the amount of data that uh, we're able to generate in labs. Uh, we're able to sequence genomes very quickly. We've got uh, these little glass plates called microarrays that can do about 50,000 tests all at once, which is an awful lot of information. It's far more than one person can do on their own, which is where I and my computer would come in to help. Uh, and you can get into bioinformatics two different ways. There's guys coming in from computer science who would learn a bit of biology, and then they go off and they do all the software development, and I just come in and I help out in the lab. Uh, and I'm what, what would be called dry bench, and the guys in the lab are wet lab because I stay clean and dry, and they do all of the dirty work for me. Uh, but just to give kind of an idea of the sort of thing that I might do, uh, my first ever project as a bioinformatician was the assembly of a genome that had never been assembled before or sequenced before. So it was totally new, there was no reference for it. And when you're assembling a genome, uh, it comes in fragments. Uh, I think it was about 20 million fragments. So it's kind of like an... A, extreme jigsaw with no picture to work on. <laughs> uh, so I had to use software to do most of the actual real work for me, which was fine because that is, again, the job of the bioinformatician. Um, and it was working fine and I decided I was going to look and I was going to see if I could find any genes of this and be a little bit fancy and do a little bit more. And I did. I went out and it's, it's actually fairly simple to do an initial run to find genes because there's a specific sequence that will tell you where they are at the start of them. Uh, so I was just going on finding those. And I decided I was going to go a little bit further and try and find some of the evolutionary history of these genes, because people love talking about evolution. Um, so anyway, I took the gene sequences that I had identified, and I went and I basically went online to one of the big databases, and I googled them. And unfortunately, I found matches, which I shouldn't have, because as I've mentioned, this was a new assembly that had never been done before. Uh, and what had ended up happening, and this unfortunately is the day before it's due, is that it was the wrong sequence the whole time, and they'd sequenced the wrong organism. So one massive rewrite later, I was crying as I handed up my masters, but I scraped the pass. I was able to convince someone to that. Pity, it's great. Um, but that's kind of the thing that we would do. And after that, I went on to work mostly in plant genetics. Um, now, plants are both really interesting and very frustrating to work with genetically. Mostly for the same reasons. Um, plants like to think of the rules of genetics as optional a lot. <laughs> uh, for instance, you're probably aware that if an animal has additional chromosomes, it's going to cause all sorts of problems down the line developmentally. Um, plants, not so much. They'll just carry on regardless. Uh, <laughs> You can, they'll, they'll speciate overnight because they'll just double their entire genome. Um, and then they've also got a thing with, where they make hybrids very easily, some of them. Uh, for instance, all strawberries are hybrids. Um, all oranges, except mandarin oranges, are hybrids which of mandarins and grapefruit. Grapefruit are also hybrids of mandarins and a thing called a pomelo. So an orange is a, a mandarin hybridized with a mandarin, so I'm not really sure if that should be classed as bestiality or incest. <laughs> uh, 
but they'll go even worse. Uh, some of the stuff that we do with grapes, we'll have grapes. Their roots will be from one plant uh, that might be resistant to a disease, and their stem will be from another plant that actually has the grapes that we make wine from and that we want from. And we'll just jam them together and they'll be happy out. Yes. They'll grow <laughs> away. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of like cutting the legs off of a horse and sticking them on a goat, so you get a fast animal that makes cheese. <laughs> but they're happy out. Uh, there's another weird thing with bananas, all but you, you'll never have seen a seed in a banana, because they're all clones, naturally. They've lost the ability to uh, have sex at all. Um, and then you've got apples, which are kind of, they're all clones, and they're all zombie Frankenstein goat beasts. Um, so they're kind of like the board of plants. Um, but anyway, to bring this a little bit back to bioinformatics and what I do, what I tend to work with is flowering plants. And, um, sorry, my mouth got really dry there. Uh, flowering plants, you tell people, oh, you work on flowers, and they're like, why? <laughs> and to be fair, I can understand the question, it's a bit odd, but it's really easy, because normally it comes up when I've been drinking. And <laughs> luckily enough, if you look at the ingredients of beer, you've got your malted barley, which is a flowering plant, technically. Uh, you've got water, of course, which is just water. But you've also got hops, which are literally flowers. So all beer is a floral infusion. <laughs> <laughs> and thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs>